Hello and good morning. This is Pastor Tom Mullins. I'm the pastor of Lexa and Marvel United Methodist Churches here in uh, Phillips County, Arkansas. This is our chapter of the day. It's Monday, 18th, and uh, we're coming to you to be able to share with you today, and I'm glad to be able to share with you today. Number 190 from the Methodist United Methodist Hymnal, uh, Who is He in Yonder Stall? And then, uh, then uh, chapter 5 from the book of Judges. As we continue our journey through the Bible, we will be um, going about uh, being able to uh, uh, continue that up until the 1st of December. Then in December, we will jump to the Gospel of Luke, and that's been our tradition to do for the last three years. And we will do the 24 uh, chapters of that uh, gospel, and then we will come back to wherever we ended up on uh, the end of November. So uh, I'm just so glad that you're here with us. I'm spending some time with us. I've been using the computer last week and this week uh, here in the office. Uh, not as quite as uh, uh, beautiful as the, or not even close to being as beautiful as the uh, sanctuary is. I'm hoping uh, in the next little bit that we'll be able to uh, maybe share on uh, our, our worship service at Lexa. Uh, I'm trying to open up the doors to that. We had five in attendance this week. Uh, as you know, uh, we are down to just a couple of members and uh, trying to revive that uh, in that area and community. And with God's help, I'm sure that things will uh, continue to improve. Uh, we have uh, moved up from uh, I think our average on vital signs, it shows us at right under four, uh, how it divides that up and, and from each week. Uh, we had uh, uh, David Treadaway is one of our uh, members there, and it's like he's done a great job of keeping things going and hopefully uh, in unison with us and, and being a part of the, the United Methodist Connection, uh, we'll be able to build and maybe reach out a little even a little more to our community. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, early into the maybe the next year, uh, you know, we're not uh, big numbers are not what we're all about, but we're hoping that our technology it's a little bit dated, and different things that are going on there as well. Uh, I am so glad to be with you. We uh, are going to have a new, um, I think it's called a, a Pro, uh, but it'll be a tablet, and we're going to have that on the stand and and maybe work out trying to work out so the sound will be a little better. I know that uh, here at the computer and being close to the phone when we use that in the sanctuary, I uh, want to see about the uh, way of getting that to where the microphone will be a little closer to me and to whoever's speaking in the, in the front of the church uh, during worship services on Sunday mornings. I know that some of you have difficulty hearing, uh, hearing the, um, the voices of us up in the front. But I want to be able to build that up in a way that we were able to know that you uh, can hear more uh, plainly and more clearly and, and be a more of a part of that. And I want you to know that if you're online and, and you're shut in or, or you're uh, not geographically close enough to be able to attend service with us, but we definitely want to invite you to come in to, into the building and be a part of that. It, there's something about seeing your face in person that is so important to us. Uh, COVID made it where uh, we realized how important it is to have that connection and different things. So, uh, like I said, we're doing chapter five from the book of Judges today and sharing that. And then 190, Who is He in Yonder Stall, which I am assuming is a Christmas song. Uh, I try not to look too far ahead sometimes in the mornings uh, before we come on. I will uh, kind of uh, look through and kind of see what uh what is up for the upcoming day i uh so glad to be a part of uh this ministry this opportunity to reach out and to be able to share with you uh from here from marvel which is a town of about 1100 folks uh we are uh, in the arkansas delta or the mississippi delta on the arkansas side of the river uh about midway uh uh down the state line uh, from up at uh, Tennessee and then run, or well actually from Missouri uh, at the Boot Hill Missouri uh, running all the way down to Louisiana uh, we have the Delta region uh, cotton corn uh, soybeans uh, there's been a lot of harvest of that going on and uh, a lot of uh, dust up in the air but the fields are like 
just quieted down where they're uh, been turned over and getting ready to be dissed and all that kind of stuff. I I haven't been around um, farmers, I guess, in a while uh, the, to the extent that it, it uh, when I was growing up, uh, I lived out in the middle of a, basically of a cornfield and uh, they rotated that also with soybeans and different things, but uh, they're in southern Ohio, so we had all of that. And then uh, I thank goodness for the fact that it's like they had what they used to call, and some of you older folks will know what a honey wagon is. Uh, it was one of those where the manure was spread across the fields and different things around the house. Uh, you know, the, the large fields that were to the, uh, actually in all three directions, except uh, over behind us was a railroad. And then behind that was another field back there and stuff, but they would spray those fields and we always joked about it, quote unquote, fresh country air uh, that was involved with that. And so uh, made the land rich anyway. We were in the um, Miami River Valley, in the Great Miami River, that uh, was uh, maybe half a mile from the house. And then uh, I used to love to go out and to go, uh, didn't fish much in the river, but fished a lot in the creeks and, and areas and lakes around there. So kind of miss that miss dad uh being with me he's been gone since 1988 uh, 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 my stepfather who raised me in different things but to be out and and uh, he was a he was a subsistent farmer i guess is what you would call us we only had a couple acres and and he would uh, we raised hogs and chickens and he uh loved to hunt he loved to hunt uh, he hunted rabbits and uh different things and but the rabbits were the most uh, he trained the dogs, we, and I helped do that as a kid and growing up and uh, being able to treat uh, the beagle dogs to be able to, rabbit dogs to be able to uh, to search out and and spook out a, a rabbit and get it out into the open um, and to run it and even to br fetch it and bring it back to you and kind of thing. And it was, uh, it was pretty adventurous. Uh, a lot of times in between dogs, me and my younger brother, we got to go and beat the brush and different things and try to, to scare out the rabbits and things. It's kind of like an opposite of what you do when you go fishing is where you're quiet and have to be kind of reserved and different things. But when you're out hunting for rabbit, it's it's one of those kind of sneak up and then boom, just make a lot of noise and kind of get them excited and running and to run out of their, their holes. Uh, but uh, it kind of works in both ways. Sometimes it... It, it was the worst of that was uh, being able to do, but uh, he uh, he brought a love for nature and for the outdoors uh, for me and my younger brother Ike. As I say, he, Ike's Ike's more into it than uh, I, I ever was. I suppose he uh, he loves to be outdoors and to fish and and uh, and do all that kind of stuff too. So um, anyway, uh, he just celebrated a birthday on the thirty first of August. Uh, it's hard to believe that my little brother is 51 years old. Or I take it back, brother, little 52 years old, 52 years old, and uh, then uh, of course uh, I will be 55 uh, on the 23rd. So my birthday is coming up. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's like things are improving health-wise, and uh, you know we're seeing the doctors and doing all that kind of stuff too. So um, you know I kind of get kind of a, a little bit nervous on the fact that it's like uh, my dad and my stepdad passed away at 68 years old my mother at 72 but uh, I was thinking about them this morning a lot and it was one of those things that uh, this time of year uh, we used to make my dad would take molasses and make corn uh, uh, popcorn balls and uh, it, it sounds kind of you know kind of quiet now but uh, to watch him to be able to put his hand in there and to make the balls uh, uh, and uh, then to get to eat them too when they were hot and fresh it was like that was pretty good too so uh, the best way to eat molasses is, is in a, those popcorn uh, conglomerations like that as well um, you know everything was kind of slowing down this time in Ohio it's starting to get a little rather cool uh, so not too long until the first frost or maybe even close to it being happening Saturday is the first day of fall or autumn, and uh, we'll start to celebrate that as we get and approach uh, the 1st of November, which is All Saints Day, 
and to remember those folks, the cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us. Uh, we're having a meeting here tonight, uh, just kind of like a, uh, an organizational meeting, just to kind of, uh, we've been here three months, Kim and I have, and uh, it's one of those things that kind of get uh, on course. We used to have what we called in uh, Kansas, the, the, there they call it the, the NOW meetings, which is Nurture, Outreach, and Witness. And uh, I think that uh, that's something that maybe we should bring to, to here to have a quarterly meeting, kind of set dates and different things for uh, to kind of see what we're headed for, kind of do an outline and, and with God's help to be able to do some things in outreach. I'm hoping uh, we will schedule a trunk or treat uh, here in the parking lot. We'll have that, excuse me, and uh, that'll be open to the community and uh, maybe get something of that, of that nature started to reach out now that we have the breakthrough youth group that has started this past wednesday on the 13th was the first uh, we had six uh, youth uh, from uh, middle school and high school age group uh, that was here with us and hoping that will grow and be a part of uh, outreach to our our youth and our students in the local area um it's just monday kind of just grouping and trying to figure out things for what they are and what we can do uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions for ministry or outreach or, or somebody that needs prayer or somebody that needs to visit, uh, just kind of throw that my way and, and we will uh, make arrangements to get out to see folks and, and see how they're doing. Uh, I would encourage you, each and every one of you, uh, to be the hands and feet of the church, hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the world, that we might be able to reach out to those that are shut in or those that are uh, injured or ill and can't uh, be mobile in the ways that uh, probably they want to be and everything like that. Um, I want to share with you, I went to uh, uh, Forest City and went to there to the rodeo. Uh, had a really good time with that. It was like we enjoyed uh, the crowd and the company and, and all of those types of folks. Uh, just enjoying that kind of a, a event. Um, it was good to, you know, uh, just to kind of relax and uh, everything. And um, just uh, the athletes and then the animals themselves, you know, it's like uh, to celebrate the idea of, of raising livestock and the things that uh, the cowboy tradition kind of has with it, with riding horses and being a part of the uh, a simpler time, I guess is how you would say it. And of course, as far as Methodists go, we are we are all about the uh, the riders and uh, the preaching of the word and, and being able to pass that along. I uh, think it's kind of neat. Pollyanna uh, Young, who is a uh, part of the Sons of Thunder, which is a, a Christian motorcycle association back in Marshall, uh, their church. I am just the outreach uh, kind of has that same similarity. You know, they're on. Of course, they're on two wheels as opposed to being on four four legs of a horse. But uh, that outreach and, and the things that they do as community there in Marshall, uh, being able to bless them in their uh, ministry and outreach to get the gospel out in ways that uh, to maybe folks that will see somebody in uh, a riding outfit or ride, no, that's probably not the right word, but the riding gear, riding riding gear that uh, comes along with riding a motorcycle and and taking those trips and going to different places um, I was really excited for them uh, they had the opportunity to go and, and uh, uh, to go to Italy I think it was uh, about been about a year ago now I guess or maybe a little less and uh, had done that so that kind of mission and ministry takes on a different flavor but it, had, it has such richness in the way that we reach out to each other, uh, maybe into communities and outliers that are not normally the people that would show up on a Sunday morning, but they are the ones that would support a ministry of some sort uh, that was uh, either to help uh, you know, the least of these, whether it be widows, orphans, foreigners, and different things that Bible specifically speaks about, but then also to be able to enjoy the fact that um, there is so much... Uh, interest in god and in jesus christ it's like the interest is there it's just a way to be able to present it without uh, you know uh, 
quoting scripture repeatedly and 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 causing uh, you know the, the, the everything to seem so uh, black and white as opposed to a world that's gray. There's all kinds of uh, different ways of thinking about things, and we need to um, we need to honor that. We need to honor the personalities and the and the ministries of those who are not in uh, maybe don't minister and don't uh, praise and worship God exactly how we do it. But the fact is that they do it, and they do it in the name of Jesus, knowing that they are reaching out to people that are lost, you know, the least, the lost. And uh, that's just a miracle in itself that uh, we are able to do. And Scripture tells us about, you know, one plants, one waters, one hoes, one harvest. You know, it's like there's all those different uh, ways of doing that. Uh, I kind of my own situation with that growing up was that I came from a different denomination, but I feel that they planted and they and they encouraged me and and got me to grow in that way. Um, this week, uh, or I'm sorry, last week was Ember Days, which is a harvest and a, and a change of the seasons kind of thing. Uh, and, and officially, I think it was 1:50 in the afternoon on Saturday is the first day. It's the beginning of of the. And then, uh, of course, the 24th will be the first full day of fall um, as we move along that direction. But it's a calendar of, of events and things and, and developing that in a way that reaches out to people where they are and brings them into the family of God. Not to make them like us, but to make folks uh, aware of the relationship that they need to have with Christ our Lord. If I could ask you to bow with me and pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your graciousness. We thank you for the kindness that you show to us. Even when we were sinners, you brought us into your loving light by your prevenient grace, knowing that we were being asked and invited into the family of God. We thank you for the justification that occurs that we know Christ is our Savior, knowing that his death and resurrection are the thing, is the things that give us hope, that helps us to develop who we are as Christ's children, we thank you for the fact that we are sanctified, that we are blessed to know you and to have your spirit with us as we go along this journey in a crazy mixed up world. I love the fact that I hear scripture and in scripture it says these people are accused of turning the world upside down. We ask for your help to turn the world upside down so that we might be able to show others that there is, there is something so special and so important about knowing you as their Savior. We want to ask that you bless this time that we come together to know your word, that we would be able to lift up and praise you with our worship and our, on our, on our, just our love of, of one another, knowing that you loved us and that you do love us and that we should love others and we should do to others and do for others in a way that helps to build them up. Not only do, do we want them to survive, but we want them to thrive in the Spirit. Bless this time together, this reading of your word, and all of these things we ask and we do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who is he in yonder stall? At whose feet the shepherds fall? Tis the Lord a wondrous story, tis the Lord the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him Lord of all. Lo, at midnight who is he prays in dark Gethsemane. Tis the Lord a wondrous story, tis the Lord the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him Lord of all. Who is he in Calvary's throes, asks for blessings on his foes? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story, tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him Lord of all. Who is he that from the grave comes to heal and help and save? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story, tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he that from yon throne rules the world of light alone? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story, tis the Lord, the King of glory. 
At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he in yonder stall, at whose feet the shepherds fall? Tis the Lord, O wonder story, tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he that from yon throne rules the world of light alone? Tis the Lord a wondrous story, tis the Lord of King, the, tis the Lord the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Amen. I guess that had a little different twist to that. That's like the gospel story, I guess, in, in, uh, involved with all of that. Um, we talked about Friday in chapter 4. Uh, we discussed that, and it was Deborah and Barak, and it was about uh, Jael killing... Uh, I think it's... Is it Jaden? Anyway... Uh, the one, I'm sorry, Sisera. Sisera was the one that she killed with the tent peg and everything. So it was kind of interesting to, to read that and, and to understand uh, that the perspective of the story is from not so much a modern perspective, but in this perspective of that to be killed by a woman was even worse than others. So uh, this entire uh, chapter 5 is called The Song of Deborah. And what it is, is it this retells the story that we did on on, on Friday, basically. Uh, but it's done in a, a poetic type deal. Then Deborah and Barak, son of Avinoam, sang on the day, saying, When locks are long in Israel, when the people offer themselves willingly, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, to the Lord I will sing. I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you sent, Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, and earth, the earth trembled, and the heavens poured, the clouds indeed poured water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, caravan ceased and travelers kept to the byways. The peasantry prospered in Israel. They grew fat on plunder because of you, because you arose, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. When new gods were chosen, when war was in the gates, was shield or spear to be seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless the Lord. Tell of it, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way. To the sound of musicians at the watering places, there they repeat the triumphs of the Lord, the triumphs of his peasantry in Israel. Then down to the gates march the people of the Lord. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, lead away your captives, O son of Abinoam. Then down marched the remnant of the noble. The people of the Lord marched down for him against the mighty. From Ephron they set out into the valley, following you, Benjamin, with your kin. From Mashir marched down the commanders, and from Zebulun, those who bear the martial staff. The chiefs of Issachar came with Deborah, and Issachar faithful to Barak. Into the valley they rushed out at his heels. Among the clans of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Why did you tarry among the sheepfolds to hear the piping for the flocks? Among the clans of Reuben there was great searching of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he abide with the ships? Asher sat still at the coast of the sea, settling down by his landings. Zebulun is a people that scorn death, that tally too on the heights of the field. The kings came, they fought, then they fought the kings of Canaan at Tanakh, by the rivers, by the waters of Megiddo. 
they got no spoils of silver. The stars fought from heaven. From their courses they fought from Sisera. The torrent Kaishan swept them away. The onrush, un, the onrushing torrent, the torrent Kaishan, march on my soul with might. Then loud beat the horses' hooves. The horses' hoofs with the galloping, galloping of his steeds. Curse me, Ross, says the angel of the Lord. Curse bitterly its inhabitants, because they did not come to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kainite, of t t dwelling women most blessed. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought him curds in a lordly bowl. She put her hand to the tent peg and her right hand to the workman's mallet. She struck Sisera a blow. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. He sank, he fell, he lay still at her feet. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell dead. Out of the window she peered. The mother of Sisera gazed through the lattice. Why is this chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the hoofbeats of his chariots? Her wisest ladies make answer. Indeed, she answers the question herself. Are they not finding and dividing the spoil? A girl or two for every man, spoiled of dyed stuff for Sisera, spoil of dyed stuffs embroidered, two pieces of dyed work embroidered for my neck as spoil. So perish all your enemies, O Lord, but may your friends be like the sun as it rises in, the, in its might. And the land had rest for forty years. I, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not much of a poet, or I'm not, and I, I know that in, I would, or I would imagine that in Hebrew, this is song is kind of in a rhythm that would be a current to them more chanted I guess kind of like a song uh, in that way uh, but I think it's amazing to see sometimes what uh, in our modern kind of thoughts are that we would think that well you know she killed someone and that lots of people died and, and different things like that but I think that uh, we have to look at it in from an anthropological kind of idea is that um, it's just the riches of what it means uh, she is honored for what she did because it was uh, for the purpose of, of defending the Lord and the honor of the people of God. And, and, uh, and it gets kind of murky, you know, there's a little bit of that. Uh, I think there's some symbolism here that could be torn apart a little more in depth and different things. I think the funny thing about white donkeys is that, um, and sit on rich carpets, it says... Uh, and you who walk by the way so in that sense it's one of those things that um, you know we see Christ the imagery of Christ when he came in on the donkey uh, being that he was a victor but he was humbly taking the praise and stuff like that so I think that's kind of what um, this would be that the leaders and the people that had uh, uh, you know fought the battle and fought the wars and stuff and then they, when they returned uh, they could return with the spoils and different things. And then there's kind of some accusation here about the different tribes not just really standing up and being one and being unified in that way. So um, it's one of those things, life is pretty tough anyway, but it's like when you challenge God, when you go to the depth of wanting, uh, telling God, uh, you know, that, you know, when you rebel against God, is that's kind of human nature in its nature in, the, in its way of acting. But uh, where the, the I think the problem comes into play, or where it's uh, decided, is that there's often, uh, you know, the, the repercussions. I guess we don't think that well, God's slow to anger. God never really gets upset or anything. But when God makes that decision to move forward. Uh, and then if somebody gets in the way of that, they tend to uh, to suffer the consequences, of course. But they're 
they're self-inflicted because of the choices that, that some people make. I um, I think that uh, it's amazing to see that the power of God, we tend to think of God and, and the idea of a paradise and, and different things in that nature. Uh, but into the ancient people and to some people today even, I think that uh, we recognize that God is all powerful. And I, they, uh, I always think it's interesting that not in the, so much in the presence of God himself, but in the presence of heavenly beings that are messengers or whatever they might be. I've always thought it interesting that the people that uh, see the angel or see the angel of the Lord or whatever it might be, that they drop to their, you know, down and their faces down and don't look uh, the spiritual beings in the face. Uh, can you imagine what the, uh, would it be like to go and to be able to, st as you stand before the throne, thank God for Jesus because uh, we would not be able to stand. We would not be able to, uh, we, we need that mediator. We need that strength that comes from knowing Christ as our Savior and that when we go before God and before we go before the Almighty, it amounts to the fact that there's a strength that comes from, from that spirit and that lens of the spirit and being able to see God and being able to, 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 to be reverent and humble, but then to also be um, able to stand up and to be able to um, uh, be allowed by the power of God to be allowed and to be understood and seen in the light of the good things that a person is, the things that God has created within us, that image of God that each one of us possesses. And it's, it's almost almost uh, atypical to the way that life usually goes along and the patterns that we do and different things. So, uh, you know, we talked about yesterday, but Deborah and Barak, uh, how they, uh, together they stood up against the enemies of God. And it's remarkable that um that there's so much uh, that God has done for us and had done for the people of Israel and each generation that uh, every 40 years uh, they seem to have to go back and start all over again so um, you know and we kind of go through that generational thing too we see things and we look back and we think oh how wonderful it was for them and this and that but uh, I had older parents, and the thing that I thought was most interesting was their stories were pretty horrible, too, uh, at times. Some of the stuff was pretty nice, but for, for a lot of times, uh, the people, the evilness of the world uh, has no expiration date. The only thing is now, it appears to be uh, everybody taking a picture of it. Whereas in the past, that wasn't as true, and sometimes... You could get away from things if you were if you had a troubled life you could move out west or you could keep going until you got to where a place out west and things you could come all the way back east and go to the south or go to the north or something to get away from from the bad habits or the bad things or the bad people that were causing your your grief and your life to not be lived up to its expectations. There was newness that could come with anonymity, uh, but unfortunately, there are those that use that as a as a gift of of not only were they bad at one place, but they ended up somewhere else and did the same thing or did even worse in a new place. So, but the ones that take the true risks and get out and and get to be able to open up the doors to what God has for them, uh, despite their past. Is a remarkable is a remarkable feat that comes from being the salvation, knowing the sanctification of God in, in our lives, and being raised up from that you know the filth and the and the, and the things that were in our past, and being uh, made clean, made uh, white, and being able to be pushed forward for that. Different parts of the Bible have different types of reading. Some are history, some are stories, some are. Uh, uh, some of them, uh, some of the chapters are poetry. Some of the things that are lifted up, but the fact is that if you put God first and you march in behind God, uh, not to use God as a as a stick and to 
or a club or whatever, but to use God in the sense that God's love and kindness and to be able to share that. Uh, the wrath of God and righteous anger, I have some difficulties with that. I just don't. I mean, it's good to be upset and it's good to be prophetic in different ways. So we might take an example of Jesus and the money changers, you know, pushing the table over and, and taking a, a you know whip to him and stuff like that. But uh, he was angered for God, not because they thought that they didn't do what he thought they should do. It was what he knew that they weren't doing what God wanted them to do. So that's that's a little different, I think, uh, in that kind of sense. But uh, to remember uh, that God can use the least thing to make his will done and known. So if you take these uh, Jael in this story and you compare her to Nebuchadnezzar in the later stories that we have in talking about uh, using a foreign uh, prince, a foreign leader, to exact judgment on you know the people of Israel and different things. Uh, you can also see how uh, this is he used a weak, what would be considered a weak person, and a small person or a young person. He he uses all kinds of people, very the elderly. The very young, it's like whatever person opens up their heart to God, and that's what this is all about. It's the idea that that these two judges opened their hearts and their minds to what God wanted them to do, and it was accomplished. And that's the way that if we want things to be different or things to be changed, we have to rely on God and we have to move forward with all of that as well. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you on this day as we come to you on this Monday. We lift up our hearts and our minds to you, that you would open them and have us to be to be your disciples, to open our hearts and minds that we might even remember to love our enemies as we love and love our neighbor, knowing that there are there are those situations, there are those times, there are those grudges, there are those different things that happen in our lives that seem to make us want to be able to accomplish something and to accomplish it right now but we ask for your patience with us as we go about the business of being your disciples giving us the wisdom to love and to care for one another and we ask for it humbly and gratefully bless this time together bless this reading of your word as we appreciate your word helping us to know what it is and what it means to be a child of god Bless us and keep us as you lead, guide, and protect us. And we ask and we do all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you and have a great day. And we will, uh, uh, Lord willing, we'll be here tomorrow. But uh, I was going to say go out there and be good to somebody today. And God bless you.